What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Nerf Rival Pierces. This is a fully automatic hopper fed blaster in the Rival series. Included is the blaster, a rechargeable battery pack, the charger, rival rounds, and the instructions. External overview of the Percy, starting up at the front. Of course, there's no in-strike barrel lug. This is a rival blaster. Below that is a front sling mount, which is uh, center aligned, so it's ambidextrous along with this sling mount. This blaster can pretty much be used equally from a right and left-handed shooter. Below that is a super stubby rival tactical rail from maybe a vertical grip or flashlight. Pretty small though. Up in the top here, we have an access door. This design is a little new. To open it, you push down the button, then you push forward. It doesn't open from the side, and it's not like an open gate, like a barn door. It's a relatively small access door with very limited access for an access door, I mean. But if you experience any jams or caught balls in the... <laughs> but if you experience any jams or get your balls in a bind, that's how you... Okay. But if you experience any jams, you have to open up the access door to get your finger in there. I did not experience any jams or malfunctions and I shot this blaster well over a thousand times. But that's the access door to shut it. You just shut it. Behind that is the hopper and the hopper door. The Percy's holds 50 rival rounds. This hopper is a little unique and in my opinion, kind of frustrating to use, but to open it, you can just pull up and this entire piece of clear plastic opens up. It doesn't have like a small hopper door. The entire thing is exposed, which makes it easy to load. But also if you tip the blaster while you're loading, the entire hopper is gonna empty itself. So it's a relatively narrow hopper door. It's a very slim hopper. I'm a little surprised you can fit 50 balls in there. But when it's open to load, you can just drop in balls. It's that fast. If you're used to magazines, hoppers will change your life and reload speed. It is super fast. And in the bottom of the hopper, you can see the feeding mechanism, which is a conveyor belt, sort of like the Prometheus and the Nemesis, which will come into play when I speak of rate of fire and some of the issues I had with the hopper feeding. And the hopper door closes very simply. On the left-hand side of the shell, it's not present on the right, is the access door or the, the hopper release button. If you have a serious malfunction with the feeding conveyor, you have to take the whole hopper out. And to do that, you pull back on this. It looks kind of like a priming handle. When you do that, the, the hopper is ejected a little bit, then you can pull it out and that's the whole hopper, which reveals the feeding conveyor belt and just where the, the hopper goes. I did not have to open this up to clear out any jams, but I did not experience any jams at all. And because you don't have to do that, and I don't really see any reason you'd have to do that, this seems like a very large button for something you don't use that often. Especially being in the location and the orientation like this, I think of it like a charging handle and all I wanna do when I'm shooting it is to charge the blaster, but that ejects your hopper, which may not be that big a deal unless you're getting shot at, in which case you just disabled your blaster, which can be, uh, you know, a problem. So don't pull on that unless you absolutely have to. I know it's tempting. <laughs> Moving back to the fire control group, this blaster has a safety just like other rival blasters. When you pull it down, you can't rev or pull the trigger. And when you push it up, you're able to do both. And it's on the right side and the left side for right or left-handed shooters. Down to the primary trigger, the Percy's is fully automatic and it's not electronically controlled like the regulator where when you just barely touch the trigger, it has to fire one in semi. It doesn't work like that. It works on a conveyor belt. So when you're pulling the trigger, all you're doing is activating the conveyor belt. So if you don't have a ball in the front of the conveyor belt, it might take half a second to actually shoot. So just be mindful of how your hopper is oriented. And every once in a while, I like to shake the hopper just like with the Prometheus and the Nemesis. And that gets the balls down by the conveyor belt ready to shoot. But there's no selector switch, it's full auto only. So to burst fire or to shoot in semi, you can just, you know, learn trigger control. So at this point, that's kind of a normal rival trigger along with the rev trigger, which is just an ordinary rival rev trigger. Being a flywheel power blaster, of course, you have to rev for a moment before pu pulling that primary trigger. To the grip, this grip is in line with other rival blasters on the market. It's oversized, it's designed for older humans, but I don't think it'll be alienating to a small hand or a child's hand. And you know me, I typically hate thumb hole stocks, but this one works okay. The ergonomic of the Percy's are really bizarre and they're not really my taste, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's more of an SMG, I'm more of a carbine guy. That's just me. And at the bottom of the grip, we have another sling mount to the stock. It's a pretty short stock, but I think it works with the whole SMG package. They're really trying to crunch the overall size of the blaster. And it's interesting, when you put this next to a Nemesis, it's only a little bit smaller, but when you shoulder it, you really feel how small it really is. If you're like in a CQB environment shooting in your house instead of out at a park, this blaster would be a much easier blaster to fling around a door frame than something like the Nemesis, and definitely better than the Prometheus. That's the stock. Now to this front little area where the battery is actually housed. Now this rechargeable battery pack is included with the blaster, which kind of justifies the price. And the installation of the battery is pretty unique because you don't need a screwdriver. There's a little button at the bottom here. There is something of a safety, so you have to push the little circle and then pull on the little slide and that unlocks the battery. And I think that's designed very well. So if you accidentally just bump on it, you're not gonna accidentally remove your battery. It's a pretty conscious effort to push the button and pull on the little slide simultaneously. This is the only time I've said, hey, thanks for the lock Hasbro. <laughs> Usually I rip out their locks, but this one prevents your battery from flying out while you're shooting. But you also don't need to carry a screwdriver, so it's pretty secure and quick access if you need to pull it out quick. <laughs>
The included battery is of a new design. It's a rechargeable pack. It has a little recharge port back here. You plug in the included charger, put it into your standard wall outlet, and it recharges. In that sense, it's exactly like the other Nerf rival batteries, but in a different sense, it's completely proprietary and will not fit into your Prometheus Nemesis or any other blaster so far. But it's a really small design, so I'm crossing my fingers that Hasbro implements this rechargeable pack into future flywheel rival blasters, hopefully. Other than that, I can just say it's a battery. I'm not a chemist, so I can't really explain it. 9.6 volt nickel metal hydrate battery. And inside the blaster is the little spring that ejects the battery, but to reinstall, you can just push it on in there. It's very, very fast. And in my testing procedure, I did actually try to slosh this and I kind of threw the blaster down and I did not have a single instance of the battery flying out of the blaster, which I'm a little surprised by because I was very skeptical about this design at first. But I can say after all my testing, it works very well. That is the external overview of the Pierces. Let's see it fire. Shooting regular yellow Nerf rival rounds. I apologize, I, I realize they are tricky to see. some single and burst fire. This is just trigger control. There's no switch to go semi-auto. Operating the rival Pierces is a lot of fun. The rate of fire is insanely quick. Nerf advertises it being the same system as from the Prometheus and the rate of fires are comparable, but from my ear, it sounds like the Pierces shoots a little bit faster. Can't say with confidence that it's the fastest, but it is damn fast, that is for sure. With a 50 round capacity hopper, it's easy to blow your entire load within five seconds and that's always embarrassing, right? Oh gosh. So rate of fire, insanely fast. I did not have a single jam or malfunction with the blaster through my entire testing procedure. And to compare the Pierces to other rival blasters, I put it up on my chronograph and I achieved an average velocity of 104 feet per second, which is on the quicker side for the rival blasters. It shoots fast, both in rate of fire and firing velocity. So that is all of the objective information I can provide on the rival Pierces. Now to my personal opinion, which is kind of mixed here. It does what it's supposed to do. It does as it's advertised to do. And it fires quick, the rate of fire and the firing velocity. So there's certainly no objective reason to avoid the blaster. My my main argument is I would rather have a Nemesis or a Prometheus. Granted, it's more fair to compare this only to the Nemesis, the Prometheus really is in a different class. But my main issue is really just what it's trying to do. I'm not really an SMG guy. I would rather have more ammo, move slower, and just like light somebody up with tons of foam. This blaster is an SMG class blaster that's designed for somebody who's quick and wants to move very rapidly between like targets or barriers. And for that specific role, it does a very good job. And I think it's superior to the Nemesis in that CQB orientation. Like I said, when you look at this in a Nemesis, it doesn't look a whole lot smaller, it is, but when you shoulder it, it's dramatically lighter in the, the balance, it's easier to whip around. But another issue I have with the blaster is its rate of fire given its capacity. You can dump your whole load in under 10 seconds, so it's more of a specialty blaster in my eyes. I take a minute to reload, I have everything all set, then I take five seconds to dump it all, and then I'd sit there and take another minute to reload, and the whole day would be spent reloading this thing. So that's kind of a double-edged sword there when you have such an awesome rate of fire. It's quick, but it only has a 50 round capacity, and the hopper is not easy to reload. It probably happened 10 times times during my testing procedure where I'd be reloading and then my hand would move just a little bit and I'd dump out half the capacity. I can load the Nemesis and the Prometheus with my eyes up looking at people trying to shoot at me with this. It takes all of my attention. It really feels like a Jenga puzzle, like don't knock it over, don't dump all your ammo. And if you're getting shot at, that's difficult. So because of the rate of fire, the ammo capacity, and the difficulty to reload, I wouldn't want to use this as a primary that I was constantly reloading. I think it would be better suited on a sling as a secondary to whip out just to blow off your 50 rounds in I mean, it's a fast rate of fire, so you blow off those 50 rounds super fast, but then you drop it back on the sling and you go back to your primary. But then again, I'm not really the type of player to use an SMG in any circumstance because I'm just not quick. I don't move fast. I don't like to move fast. I'd rather go slow with a bigger capacity like the Prometheus or the Nemesis and shoot from a longer range. So my opinion's definitely mixed. It does what it's trying to do. I just don't like what it's trying to do. So my opinion aside, if you're a lightweight nerfer and you don't like to carry lots of stuff and you like to move quickly, but you think, hmm, the Zeus, you know, fits ergonomically, but it only has 12 rounds. This is an upgraded Zeus, really for that type of class and for that overall profile and size of the blaster, but much higher capacity and it's much easier to reload. So when you compare it to every other rival blaster, it's a dominating blaster. But when the Nemesis is right there, 
it's hard for me to say, well, I'd rather have half the capacity, double the rate of fire, and, you know, this annoyance of reloading. So I would gravitate towards the Nemesis, obviously. No jams and malfunctions, above average firing velocity, interesting ergonomics that will definitely suit some people. I don't want to be too negative because it does what it's trying to do, and that's my number one job as a reviewer, to tell you, yes, it does what it's trying to do. I'm not trying to tell you what I use, and for you guys to use my stuff, use the best stuff for your playstyle. So hopefully I explained my opinion well enough for you to make a, an educated purchase decision. If you're interested in buying a rival Percy's, I'll have a link in the description box when it's available. I haven't seen these available yet because Hasbro sent me this in the recent care package. Thank you very much for Hasbro for sending this out early so I can get the review up. Kind of a strange opinion, but hopefully it's an adequate review. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, bros, and as always, stay tactical.